Hey everyone, I'm a Vitae volunteer and today I'm going to teach you guys about exponents and power, especially for your NTSC exam. Vitae is a non-profit initiative by the students of IIIT Kanchipuram. Now let's look at the contents of this chapter. First, I'll give you a brief introduction to this topic exponents and powers and then I'll uh, show you what are the laws of exponents. Then I'll give you a brief introduction to quadratic equations. I won't go in depth because uh, you'll probably learn them in your higher classes. Then I'll teach you about logarithms and uh, some of its properties. And finally, we'll be taking a look at finding the units place of higher powers. Uh, you would have probably studied about exponents and powers in your lower grades, but still let's have do a recap. Suppose you have a into a into a n times. You can write that as a uh, a raised to the power n. You can also call this as nth power of a or a to the power n or a power n but personally I say a power n because it's very short and easy to understand just a power n. Over here uh, a is called as the base because it's in the bottom it's called the base and uh, n is called the index or exponent. Over here are uh, some of the laws of the exponents as uh, you can see on the screen. Uh, these are actually very important. Proofs for these laws are not necessary. Especially for NTSC it's not uh, really necessary. It's actually very easy to prove. And uh, so you just need to understand and know what are these laws but you don't need the proofs. And uh, to understand these laws let's just do an example problem. Yeah. So uh, as given on the screen. If uh, 10 power 0 0.48 is equal to x and uh, 10 power 0 0.7 is equal to y and you have another equation x power z is equal to y square we got to find the value of z so uh, we can just find uh, substitute the values of x and y which is actually 10 power 0 0.48 and 10 power 7 in the second equation x power z is equal to y power y square and uh, we would get the equation as we can see on the screen uh, using the fifth law shown here where where you can see a power n to the power m is a power n into m you can write it as uh, 10 power 0 0.48 times z is equal to 10 power 1.4 as you know if the bases are equal you can compare the exponents and if the exponents are equal you can compare the bases over here the bases are equal so you can compare the exponents so by comparing the exponents or the indices uh, you can write the equation 0 0.48 times z is equal to 1.4 and by dividing by 0 0.48 on both sides you get z is equal to 2.92 it's a very simple problem you can try it out yourself if you want to now let's take a look at quadratic equations the general form of a quadratic equation is uh, given as a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0 where a should not be equal to 0 because you know if a is equal to 0 you just get b x plus c is equal to 0 and it's a linear equation it's not a quadratic equation anymore x just has one solution so if a is e not equal to 0 it's not a quadratic equation anymore and as you can see on the screen, uh, the solution of the quadratic equation is given by x is equal to minus b plus or minus root over b square minus 4ac by 2a. Over here you can see the plus or minus because as it's a quadratic equation it has two solutions of x. So the plus and minus are basically the two solutions of x. And uh, if you look at the part inside the root b square minus 4ac if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 you know the root is going to be a real number so you will have two solutions if the b square minus 4ac is equal to 0 you would literally have minus b plus or minus 0 by 2a plus or minus 0 is anyway 0 so your x has only one solution even though it's a quadratic equation your x would have only one solution if your b square minus 4ac is 0 but if it is lesser than 0 which is a negative number a root of a negative number is uh, basically turns out to be a complex number and we don't deal with complex numbers here 
so you don't have any real solutions you can just say no real solutions and go on with it and uh, while solving quadratic equations if you encounter any problem like x square plus 1 by x square is equal plus is equal to c or something like that you can uh, do some appropriate substitutions like for example you can substitute x square as a so you can write as the form a plus 1 by a and once you expand it you will get it as a quadratic equation so you just do appropriate substitutions to solve the problem it will make it easier and now let's do an example problem this is not actually a problem quadratic equations but let's just solve it it's a pretty simple problem it's a uh, quite hard to find the value of x from the given equation and then you got to plug in into the cubic equation and then finding the result is is a huge headache so instead let's make use of some identities and uh, solve this problem you know x plus 1 by x the whole square is equal to x square plus 1 by x square plus 2 So by adding two on both sides in your given equation, you can write as x square plus one by x square plus two is equal to thirty four plus two, which is equal to thirty six. And uh, you can simplify it as x plus one by x the whole square is equal to thirty six. So finally, you get the value of x plus one by x as six. If you cube uh, x x plus one by x is equal to six on both sides, you get x cube plus one by x cube. Plus three times x plus one by x is equal to two one six. We know the value of x plus one by x is equal to six. So if you substitute in this equation, you would get x cubed plus one by x cubed is equal to two one six minus eighteen, which is equal to one ninety eight. Is a very simple problem. So next, uh, let's go on to logarithms. Logarithms is uh, literally the inverse of exponential powers. I'll, I'll actually tell you why it's called uh, the inverse of exponential powers later. As you can see, if you have a to the power x is equal to b, then you can write x is equal to log b to the base a. Logarithms is very useful to solve equations in which the uh, index is unknown, like how I just said, a power x is equal to b. In this case, you know a and b. You can uh, solve for x using logarithms. And uh, ln of x is also known as natural logarithm. You can call it as ln x also, uh, which is it's basically log x to the base e. And in short, we write it as ln or ln x. As you can see on the screen, what I have shown is the graph of log x to the base two. So you have this graph over here. Try drawing a line. y is equal to x just draw the y is equal to x line and if your y is equal to x line acts like a mirror the uh, mirror image of this graph will actually be the graph of 2 power x that's why logarithm is called as the inverse of uh, power so the inverse of 2 power x is actually log x to the base 2 So now you understand why I call it as the inverse of powers. Now these are some of the properties, logarithmic properties. Uh, similarly, like how I told for the laws of exponents, you don't need to know the proofs for this. It's actually very easy to prove, just like the laws of exponents. But it's not necessary to prove them. You don't need to know the proofs for, especially a case exam. You just need to know these properties. and uh, you can solve most of the problems on logarithms now let's solve a very simple problem on logarithms as you can see if 12 power x is plus 50 is equal to 194 we need to find the value of x by simplifying this equation you can write as 12 power x is equal to 144 uh by taking logarithms you can write it as x is equal to log 144 to the base 12 144 you know it's 12 square so if you use the logarithmic properties you can you'll get it as x is equal to 2 is a very simple problem now finally yeah it's uh, this is a pretty hard sub topic or i would say it is uh, hard to understand but it's actually quite simple once you understand you can solve many tough problems if you can understand this concept this uh, finding units place of higher powers is very important so yeah
as you can see on the table given here n if n is of the form 4k plus 1 or 4k plus 2 4k plus 3 and 4k where k can be any integer k can be any integer and if n is of the form as shown there and if you need to find the units place of those numbers 2 power n 3 power n you can just look at the table and uh, find them it it's basically a, like a pattern if you know this pattern you can find the units place of any number raised to the power any number so suppose if i give you tell you to find the uh, power of 2 power 9 you can uh, units place of 2 power 9 a uh, 9 you can write as 4 into 2 plus 1 so the units place of 2 power 9 would be 2 as you can see uh, uh, on the table stable says if n is of the form 4k plus 1 2 power n is uh, units place would be 2 so 2 power 9's units place would be 2 if you want you can just calculate 2 power 9 and uh, check if it's the same and uh, over here as you can see on the tables only given for 2 3 4 7 8 9 it doesn't mean it doesn't follow the pattern for the other numbers also it follows the same pattern for the other numbers but it's very simple for the other numbers for 1 5 6 and 0 One five six zero raised to the power any number will be the number itself. One power ten would be one. One power ten thousand would be one. Five power ten thousand the units place would be five. Six power ten thousand the units place would be six. So the number raised to the power any number just for one five six and zero would be the number itself. And as you can see over here, uh, for any number raised to n. has the same unit place as the units place of the number raised to n what it actually mean is means is if you have uh, 47 raised to the power 10 it's same as the units place of 47 which is 7 raised to the power 10 and uh, let, let's do an example problem to understand this more so as shown here you need to find the units digit of 137 power 13 the whole raised to the power 47 so if you need to find the units place of uh, 137 power 13 whole to the power 47 let's first find the units place of 137 power 13 it's the same as uh, units place of 7 power 13 and you can write 13 as 4 into 3 plus 1 and as you can see on the table given here if it is in the form of 4k plus 1 the units place would be 7 and that's what we have written here and next we have to find the units digit of that number raised to the power 47 so it would actually be a 7 power 47 the units place are 7 power 47 and 47 can be written as 4 into 11 plus 3 so you need to know the units place of 7 power 4 into 11 plus 3 and as you can see over here the units place would be 3 and as you can see we have written that the answer would be 3 so your uh, final answer which is the units digit of 137 power 13 whole power 74 would be 3 and now here are more example problems on this topic these are actually pretty hard and i haven't given the solution because i want you guys to try it first i'll for sure explain the solution so uh, you can pause the video right here now and uh, try it out yourself and then if you don't get it or if you want to check if your solution is right you can just listen to it and you can get the solution so let's look at the first problem we have to rank the given numbers from smallest to biggest yeah okay so your given numbers are 2 power 120 3 power 72 and uh, 17 power 30 okay so how do you find if a number a is greater than b or if b is greater than a let's use a simple property if a is greater than b then a by b would obviously be greater than 1 and if a is lesser than b then a by b would obviously be lesser than 1 so using the same property let's just find the relation between the given numbers here uh first i'm going to take 2 power 120 and uh, 3 power 72 Uh, let me just divide them so i'll write it as 2 power 120 by 3 power 72 you can uh, simplify them and write it as 
2 power 5 by 3 power 3 whole power 24 the greatest common factor of 120 and 72 is 24 so you can take 24 common outside and uh, write as 2 power 5 by 3 power 3 whole to the power 24 so now all you need to find is if 2 power 5 by 3 power 3 is greater than 1 or less than 1 because if any number greater than 1 raised to the power any number any positive number it would be greater than 1 and if it's a number lesser than 1 the number lesser than 1 raised to the power any positive number will again be lesser than 1 so we are going to check if 2 power 5 by 3 power 3 is greater than 1 or less than 1 and if you expand them 2 power 5 is 32 and uh, 3 power 3 is 27 and obviously 32 is greater than 37 so uh, you can find out that from this you can find out that 2 power 120 is greater than 3 power 72 cuz the ratio is greater than 1 now let's compare 2 power 120 and 17 power 30 initially when you take a glance you might think uh, 2 power 120 is greater than 17 power 30 because of that power 120 but let's just uh, solve and check if it's actually true or not So again, let's uh, write 2 power 120 by 17 power 30. Over here, the greatest common factor of 120 and 30 is 30 in this case. So let's take 30 common. You can write it as uh, 2 power 4 by 17 whole to the power 30. And as you know, 2 power 4 is 16. So the inside part would be 16 by 17 whole to the power 30. And you know, 16 by 17 is lesser than 1. obviously it's less than 1 and any number less than 1 raised to the power 30 would again be less than 1 so in this case as a 2 power 120 by 17 power 30 is less than 1 17 power 30 is greater than 2 power 120 so now if you align them 17 power 30 is greater than 2 power 120 and 2 power 120 is greater than 3 power 72 So as you can see, the answer which I have shown, three uh, is greater than one is greater than two. Now let's take a look at the second problem. If you want, you can uh, pause the video as I told earlier and solve, and then listen to it later to know the solution. Yeah. So let's get into the solution. Uh, this problem, you can actually solve this problem easily by uh, eliminating the options. Eliminating the options is a really good method. to solve most of the problems especially when the multiple choice problem so as the question says uh, you have to find which of the following is a square of a number so we can actually easily solve this by using the concept of finding the units place and i'll show you how to so solve that actually so as you know a uh, square of 1's units place is 1 square of 2's units place is 4 square of 3's units place is 9 Four would be a uh, six, yeah. Five would be five. Six uh, squares units place would be six. Seven squares units place would be nine. Eight squares units place would be a uh, four again. Uh, nine squares units place would be one, and uh, ten squares units place would be zero, yeah. So as you can see, the units place is never a uh, units place of a square is never seven, and it is never three. so you can easily eliminate options 2 uh, and 4 because the units place of the numbers shown ends with a 7 and a 3 and uh, none of a, the square of a number never ends with a 7 and a 3 so you can easily eliminate option 2 uh, and 4 now you are left with options 1 and 3 now you would be wondering how do i find which one of these options is a right answer as the question says it says which of the following is a square of a number suppose you have any even number and they ask you is this even number a square or not first you divide by 2 if you divide the number by 2 it should be divisible by 4 also because it's a square of a number so if it is divisible by 2 it has to be divisible by 4 and that's a property for all uh, squares of a number which is an even number So if you divide uh, 181 181476 by 2 and uh, 181470 by 
you would see that uh, 181470 is actually not divisible by 4 it's divisible by 2 but not divisible by 4 so you can eliminate the option 181470 so 181470 is also not a square of a number so finally the only option remaining is 181476 so by eliminating the other three options you get that 181476 is a square of a number yeah that's it for uh, today guys uh, thank you for attending and you can check the description below for extra questions and lecture notes for this chapter